Good morning. Please rise. Welcome to St. Joseph's. Today we're celebrating the fourth Sunday of Lent, which is traditionally called La Terre Sunday, meaning a joyful Sunday. As a Gaudete Sunday in Advent, rose-colored vestments, as you can see, are wear by the priests and the deacons in replacing the violet color and flowers also grace the altar, symbolizing the church's joy in anticipation of our celebration of the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord. We offer this mass for the soul of David Quigley, and we also pray for those who celebrate their the gift of life, those who are celebrating their birthdays, for Alexis Colon, and for all our personal intentions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. We believe in a God that is compassionate, always ready to embrace us, ready to cleanse us from all our sins. So we acknowledge that we need that cleansing. And we recognize that by confessing, we know that we are in the same boat. We are all together toward redemption. So let us ask for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through the most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebration to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests, and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often, did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all the palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, King of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Spoiler. 
Brothers, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, 
so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. For whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that its works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Today's gospel passage from St. John offers us powerful statements of faith that provoke much reflection and various interpretations. John 3.16, that verse is perhaps one of the most used and misused biblical declarations by Christians all over the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. That certainly sums up not just today's passage, but the whole gospel message. The next love-drenched verse Number 17 is, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Some people in many Christian denominations are determined by their words and attitudes to make sure people hear the following verse. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. That's a pretty neat package, isn't it? If you believe in Jesus, you are saved. If you don't, well, too bad for you. Usually people using this quote are pretty sure which side of the saved, damned uh, divide they are going to wind up. They usually talk about the other, not themselves. Imagine taking a couple of verses out of the scriptures and passing judgment on the whole world who do not accept or know Jesus. For sure, the gospel is quite clear that through Jesus' birth, death, and resurrection, God has saved the world. That's the essence of Christian teaching. 
So we have to be very careful how we judge other people. For example, we know that because of historical, geographical, and or cultural settings, there are some people who do not believe or know Jesus. And we know that they are not condemned. John's gospel has a repeated message of God's love and desire to save all people, the entire world, even if they do not express faith in Christ. John's is not the only gospel to say that. Perhaps you recall the classic judgment scene in the Gospel of St. Matthew, where all the nations are gathered before the throne of judgment and the sheep are separated from the goats, the blessed from the cursed. The norms by which the people are judged and separated are not primarily by their expressed belief in Jesus but because they fed the hungry, clothed the naked, gave drink to the thirsty, and so on. They might not express the belief of Jesus, but they don't reject Jesus as they followed and lived Jesus' commandments, even without knowing him. People are accepted into God's kingdom if they truly and generously cared for one another and served God in that manner. Everybody can say, I believe, but then ignores the expectation of such a statement. And I bet you that if you examine yourselves, I have done that myself, we are all guilty of that. I continue saying, I believe, and I continue falling short of the expectations of that declaration. All of us here are privileged to have received a call to know God through the revelation of Jesus. We believe in him and proclaim him by our lives, by our actions. And that is the gift of our vocation as baptized Christians, an unmerited and loving gift from our God. We have not earned uh, the gift, so let's be careful whom we judge as saved or condemned. As St. Paul reminds us today, God is rich in mercy even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ, by grace you have been saved, he says. In John's Gospel, to believe in Jesus is to act in generous truth or to do the truth. It is not just about uploading Jesus from the sidelines. It's doing what we claim to believe. We believe in Christ because we have received the gift of grace from our, our reaching God, who is always there for us, always making himself available, always reaching us out so that we can have a better future, so that we cannot lose hope that the best is yet to come. We believe in Christ because we have received the, grief, the grace as a gift. So Lent calls us to reflect on this gift and then act out on the, of the new life it gives us. Here is a troublesome sounding verse also. But whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. For John, believe is an action verb. 
we faith. We do good works in response to our belief in Jesus. Believing in him cannot be reduced to affirming certain doctrines that he is the son of God, died for our sins, was raised from the dead, and so on. That is all part of the believing. But for John, there is more. It is not believing belief versus unbelief for John. It is belief versus disobedience. And he's pretty clear in the way he expressed that belief. He gave us so many examples in his gospel. The overall message of Lent is not about condemnation, but what we hear repeated in today's scriptures. St. Paul is very clear and concise. God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love God had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And this is not from you. It is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. Today is a good day for us to realize how embraced in God's love we are. It is all coming from God. He's the one who makes us special. He's the one who has the answers. He's the one who wants to work through us is not in our control, it should be in his control. So let us ask the Lord to help us reflect a little deeper in the remaining weeks of this Lent so that we can abandon ourselves in the presence of God so that he may transform us in the persons that he wants us to be so that we may truly depend on him in everything that we do. I now invite the elect to come forward with the sponsors. Today the church calls the elect to conversion to deepen their resolve to hold fast to Christ and to carry out the decision to love God above all. Let us pray at this time for them to be given a spirit of repentance, a sense of sin and strength of will, to live a true freedom as children of God. My dear elect, I invite you to join your prayers to this community of faith and to kneel as we intercede on your behalf. Let us pray for those elect whom God has called that they may remain faithful to him and bodily give witness to the words of eternal life. That God may dispel darkness and be the light that shines in the heart of our elect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, yeah. That he may gently lead them to Christ, the light of the world. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our elect may open their hearts to God and acknowledge him as a source of light and witness of truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us, by the example of our lives, may become in Christ the light of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Father of mercy, you see us to the kingdom of light through the gift of faith in your Son. Free those elect from the false values that surround and blind them. Set them firmly in your truth, children of the light forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus, you are the true light that enlightens the world. Through your spirit of truth, free those who are enslaved by the father of lies. Stir up the desire for good in those elect whom you have chosen for your sacraments. Let them rejoice in your light that they may see and let them prove to be staunch and fearless witness to the faith. For you are Lord forever and ever. My dear friends, this community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the Word of God, which you have shared with us today. Be assured of our loving support and prayers for you. We look forward to the day when you will share fully the Lord's table. You may go now in peace. As a believing community, please stand and let us profess the faith that unifies us all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man, for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. We show our love to God by serving him and loving others. And so we turn to him in prayer for the needs of this world. For the church. 
that we may continue to grow in our relationship with Christ and manifest God's unbounded love for the human family by deeds of light. We pray. Lord, we are pray. For the gift of hope, that we may not despair as we encounter violence, greed, and abuse, but by the Holy Spirit courageously give witness to God's mercy and compassion. We pray. Lord, we are pray. For all who seek to grow in faith, that Christ will reveal himself more and more to all who are preparing to receive sacraments this spring and help them to live faithfully as children of the light. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis on the anniversary of his election as Pope, that God will sustain him in his ministry, inspire his teaching, and help him to lead the church to greater faith and love. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing of the wounds of racism, that God will raise up all who have been wounded by racism and prejudice and inspire us with new ways to build a community of justice and cooperation. We pray. for all who are suffering, that God's unending love will bring health to the sick, food to the hungry, shelter to the homeless, and jobs to the unemployed. We pray. For a renewed spirit of stewardship, that we may efficiently use the natural resources entrusted to us and work to share them with those who are in need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that their faith in Jesus will bring them into the fullness of eternal life, we pray. We pray for a deeper appreciation of the gift of life, that we may protect it and defend that life in each one of us. We pray also for all those who celebrate that life, who have birth this today, for Alexis Colon. We pray to the Lord. Loving Father, your son was lifted high upon the cross so that the world might not might know the way to salvation. May we be filled with joy this day as we participate in the self-offering of Christ, whose name is our hope and whose light is our truth. Through Christ our Lord.
shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbear to shine but God who called me here below will be from Forever, my. Whether this our offering may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father, may the Lord accept the sacrifice in my hands, the praise and glory of His name, for our good and all our holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings this morning, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as it is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred uh, time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, the freed uh, from disordered uh, affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world uh, as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as with our end we acclaim. Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word uh, that brings salvation, the hand uh, you extend to sinners like us, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify those gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist this morning. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread in his hands and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, uh, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, and do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you, that you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all peoples. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Joseph Tyson our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of our Lord be with you. Let, it, <clears throat> let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are welcome to this meal. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. I invite all of you in your homes to join me in this act of spiritual communion so that the Lord may come to you and strengthen you. Lord Jesus Christ, you said you stand at the door knocking, desiring to enter in. We trust in your desire to be with us in this moment and your power to effect what you desired. We ask that you be with us in the fullness of your presence, body and blood, soul and divinity within our own hearts. May you stay with us this moment and remain with us throughout our day. Bless us and care for us, enter our mind our heart, our affections and desires. Transform us from within. Help us never to leave this intimacy with you, but to know that as you are in the Father, so you are in us and we in you. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who, com who comes into this world, uh, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Mass celebrations of the Feast of St. Joseph coming up this Friday, March 19th. <clears throat> there will be a 9 o'clock school mass um, as our daily mass and 6.30 in Spanish. Please join us for these special masses to celebrate the Feast of St. Joseph in this year of St. Joseph. Register online at the website or call the parish office. There's uh, limited seating for the 9 a.m. Mass. We'll be having all of the students in here for the first time in a long time as school returns to full day attendance, and so they will all be able to enter the church again as a school. <clears throat> this message is for current altar servers. We have some exciting news to share. For all altar servers that have served in the past who are interested in assisting with the masses again, there will be a retraining this coming Wednesday evening, March 17th at 6 o'clock here in the church with Father Osmar. <clears throat> and I will be assisting and Miss Carol will be assisting, so we are looking forward to that. All servers will begin assisting with Holy Week and Easter Masses. Please arrive on time for this very important training. We look forward to your service and commitment to serving at the altar of the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah, right? Bringing altar servers back. Holy Week and the Easter schedule. Holy Thursday, 6 p.m. will be bilingual. Friday, Good Friday, will be at 6 p.m. bilingual. Easter Vigil, will be at 8.30 and Easter Sunday, 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. in English, 11 and 12.30 in Spanish. Schedules are in the flock note announcements this weekend and also they are located um, on the registration tables as you leave. There will be a second collection on March the 20th, 21st for the Easter flowers. Now with the announcement from the governor, uh, we uh, will be able to go on 50% capacity on this church. That means 400 people in our masses here. So we are very happy with the announcement and hopefully more people will be able to join us as soon as we're ready, 400 people, it's a lot. So that's good, good news. Let's keep on praying that we finally come back to a normal life and so that we can worship together as one community. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying God by your lives.